Hi. Um, so, yeah, I'm Annalisa. I'm the director of And Company. And And Company um, is a broker of creative opportunities. And, um, and I'm really, really happy to be here talking about craft because I think it's a really, really interesting word for, um, for a, is that going to work? For a word that's kind of quite benign, um, it's incredibly divisive and incredibly um, full of very conflicting um, definitions, I guess. Um, if you think about, from craft can be seen as being quite a dirty word in some contexts. If you think about the fact that in the last couple of years, Craft Australia was defunded, Object, um, the Australian Centre for Craft and Design, has recently rebranded and dropped the word craft from their name. Um, there's something funny happening in terms of how we understand what craft is and what it might mean. Um, if you think about the difference between the word crafty and craft, if you think about um, there's associations about contrast between kind of a contemporary kitsch versus um, centuries old traditions, between something that's a hobby versus something that's taken years of training to get to a point where you're a professional, between decoration and high quality goods. And I think that um, that, that fuzziness around how you define what craft is, is actually one of the most um, valuable parts of, craft, of what craft is. And in a way, um, Underlying all those different versions, you've got a sense of, of making and a value on making, whether that's hand making or shifts outside of that. Um, a really intimate knowledge of your materials um, and a sense of provenance of where that thing has come from that has been crafted. And whether you call yourself a craftsperson or a maker or a designer or an artisan or a dabbler or a pro-am or a master craftsman or whether you're a jeweler or a chef like Chris Tay or whether you have um, crafting sessions with your local knitting group or whether you are so, um, so honed in your skills that you can partner with science and medicine to produce specialist objects, um, in a way, what's in a name? I think that the potential for craft and the potential for craft in Sydney is huge and has the potential to really start a revolution, and that's what I want to talk to you about. So the fuzzy edges are what make it interesting, and, um, and I want to take it back to, to where that idea of the craftsman comes from, because we work with a lot of objects, designed objects and designers. Um, one of the um, real values about craft is, an undertaking craft and making things, is that sense of connection to past traditions and to that sense of provenance. Once upon a time to become a craftsman, you had to do an apprenticeship that took quite a long time. And then you became a journeyman, where you traveled around, interesting gender specific thing there, um, but where you had to travel around the countryside touting your skills and your wares. And if you eventually took it on to set up a shop, you could become a master craftsperson. And once you reached that level, you joined a guild. And only master craftspeople could join guilds. And once you were part of a guild, you were part of a very special community that supported and promoted your craft. Um, but that you contributed back to as well. Um, and I think that that idea of committing your life to, to a skill is, is fascinating, but also a little bit incongruous. And I think if you think about the way that Gen Y is often depicted these days as being somewhat flighty, whether that's that they uh, can't, don't want to stick to one job all their life or that they want, it, they want everything um, and want to try everything, um, committing to one craft is it seems a bit incongruous, but at the same time, and this is where there's all, all these conflicts around craft in terms of how you define it, start to plug in. Um, to reference back again to Portlandia, um, which parody the same, the same song, um, which if you watch that clip is quite funny. Um, parody is the fact that actually there's a lot of people who are really getting in touch with and, and really embracing making again and learning these skills. And I think that there's a real attraction to, to the sense of, um, of integrity and satisfaction that comes from making something with your hands and to going offline. Um, it's a, there's a really genuine joy and satisfaction in making something. Um, and, and I think it's also a really different headspace to occupy, especially if you think about how fractured and multitasking our online brains um, have become. To actually stop and make a thing um, has a, real, a really different place that we don't maybe make enough time for these days. Um, and I think that aside from the making side of it, when you've finished, you've got this tangible thing to show for doing very real kind of manual work. And whether you use it or whether you gift it or whether you sell it, um, there's this whole, you, you kind of plug into something really quite different to what day-to-day -day life tends to be about. Although I'm probably preaching to the converted here. Um, I think this also plugs into a much wider 
um, a much wider um, maker movement that's been happening, particularly over in the US, that's coming out of a, a natural progression from our online existence. So the internet now provides us with so much training, you can learn how to do or make anything online. There's sales platforms online, and you can promote your business online. And, to, um, and so we're now using those things as tools to, um, to help us take making into um, a wider audience. I need to move along. I think the tentative beginnings are showing here. So you've got um, finders keepers with great success, but also makers across the board, which is really exciting. Um, and I just want to talk to you about where I think craft has so much potential. A lot of stuff that we've been seeing as being kind of contemporary craft is this sort of um, this laser cut revolution going on at the moment. And it's cute, but it's kind of a bit um, repeat, repeat. I think the reason that it's taken off so much is because it's so accessible, because anyone in their bedroom with a computer can make a file, make a design, get it made, and end up with this tangible great thing that looks really finished in quality in their hands. Um, what would happen if you actually had that laser cut in your bedroom too? And you could experiment and actually get to know what, your, what, that, what that machine was capable and what your material was capable of. What would happen if you actually had a whole workshop that had equipment that would allow you to prototype anything that you wanted, that would allow you um, access to, to equipment, to tools, to spaces, to expertise, whether that's amateur or, or professional expertise in how to make things. What would happen to the quality of your design output then? Having access to a workshop space like that, to me, sets up a community that, um, that can plug into something that's incredibly fluid, that's incredibly accessible, and that has a real sophistication to the output. And there's the the potential for a real innovation explosion in terms of craft and making and output in the city. And that's what we're currently trying to set up at our company. We're in the process of funding Sydney's first um, public maker workshop. Um, and to me, the next step from there is what if you could then take that access to making and make it into your day job? If you want to know about that, come to our Vivid, um, come to our Vivid talk that's just been um, promoted online just yesterday, which is very exciting. So I think that. Once everyone, if everyone can learn to make, if you make one thing, whether that scares you because you don't want to make a mess or not, um, if you make something, it helps you value that making, it helps you value the materials, it helps you value the things around you, it helps you have, it changes the, your investment in the objects that you own and that you, that you surround yourself with, and that in turn makes you a more responsible consumer. Um, and so I think we are on the cusp of a maker movement revo revo revolution in Sydney, and, um, and I hope you guys will come on board and be a part of it. Thank you.